so when I was about eight or nine years old, I was I had taken my blanket outside onto the driveway along with a lawn chair. And it was about evening, you know, not afternoon. It was like sun was setting and I was watching the sunset outside. And I lived on this golf course, uh, and we lived right off of one of the greens. Um, our house. Uh, and like right outside of our house, there was this backyard and backyard lived right off the green. So it was obviously this very beautiful view. And across the street of where the golf course was, was this orange grove. And the orange grove is open so for you to look at, but that's where the sun was setting. And when the sun set, is setting, it's like casting the leaves and shadows all over the, you know, golf course. It's, it's a very serene and peaceful sight. And here in Florida, things obviously get very hot. It's Florida, very sunny. But as the sun was setting, this breeze came along. And I got really cool. And I was in my blanket. And I don't know why I did this. I don't know why what brought me outside to do this because I'd never done this before. And I've attempted to emulate this before. It's never succeeded. But I was out there, wrapped up in this blanket, this cool breeze going around me. I could feel it on the back of my head because recently I had had a haircut. So, you know, there was just so many, it was a, it was such a sensual feeling to feel the cool air. Just like caressing my head while I was watching the sunset. Oh, this beautiful scene wrapped up in this blanket, completely comfortable. And I think that's the only time in my life where I've ever actually been content without anxiety and without worry. Hey guys, welcome back to the Kings of Controversy podcast. And today, this is about our fourth recording, right? Would you say fourth third, or third? Third, third. We've recorded two other episodes, and two other episodes just weren't up for par on either of our... Uh, for different reasons. Yeah, for different reasons each, but they just weren't ready. They they're ne they never will be ready. They'll never be released. They're not good. They were half assed, and this time it won't be half assed. This is going to be something we work on, something we stick with, and something that I believe we've been preparing for for a long time. Well, part of the problem been... is that we post like we posted that video saying like we're back or whatever, but like, there's a lot to live up to. We've created a legacy here you know the eight ball name is a household name effectively i would i would like to think that but <laughs> at the same time i also don't really want that on this channel i would never want to be popular. popular no because the the craving i have for power is enough to drive me towards political violence in and of itself if I were to have a platform to talk on and I attract a lot of people, I would most definitely get caught before I ever actually did anything politically radical. It would damn me. And I would just use it. And I would be like, haha, oh, I don't care. And then get arrested for advocating for violence against the federal the government. So you'd want to remain a ghost for as long as possible? I want to remain a voice for people whose ears are open tuned not, to the wind yes that are tuned to a specific frequency that hears what i <laughs> say understands what i say dogs and, yeah dogs just i'm a dog whisperer <laughs> for, for anarchists is don the dog whisperer the don whisperer so we have a series of topics once again we've compiled a list and we don't have to go down them chronologically either. We can, just, we can just bring them up and ask me about them because I've written about most of them. Um, I think I've written all of them, actually. I don't see any that you put on here. <laughs> no, I was busy taking yeah. a test. Before right. the episode, Don had me take a political scale test. I'm sure yeah. you've probably heard of. Um, my scores are... Weird, not quite what I would have expected. A lot of uh, mutuality. 
like sort of in between. Apparently, I'm very progressive. Apparently. I would disagree with, but, you know, the test speaks. So, right. let's look at this topic list here. And we have, um... Bring up any of these, and I will talk to you about them in a sense, to the best of my abilities. Now, I'm curious what you have to say about being an adult, because I recently have scheduled a meeting with my academic advisor to drop out of the next semester of college. And I'm going to be well, getting a job. So what do you have to say about being an adult, John? As of April, I turn 20. And being 20, I'm legally an adult. And becoming an adult. And living since I was 18. Going to college. Getting my GED. Getting my shit together. Has been most likely the most enlightening thing for me on my end. For about how much of our lives. How much of your life and how much of my life. I have wasted doing things that I ultimately do not value or that we do not value. Like being an adult in America means setting aside things that you want to do and pursuing things that will keep you alive. And it, realistically speaking, it should not be that hard to get food. It should not be that hard to get water or to have a home or property. But it is. But why is it hard to be an adult in America? And why do our previous generation that have taught us and who have tutored us and mentored us and uh, parented us? I don't think that's a correct terminology. Parented is not a word, but like raised us. Raised us is a better term. Raised us. Why are they telling us that we should be comfortable with the way things are because things haven't changed? I'd like to uh, make a comment here. I know a lot of people who like work every day or their families work every day so they can, you know, eat. And it's weird that like how indirect it is. It's like if you think about like even. 50, 60 years ago, people would get food. Like, it feels like a lot easier. I don't know. Easier in what way? Yeah, I, I can't imagine my grandma working like as, as often. Like she might have, my grandfather worked in a factory, so he probably physically outworked a lot of people I know. But I doubt he worked as often or as like ridiculous of hours. He probably worked every day for five hours, six hours, something like that. But people nowadays have to work 40 plus hour weeks just to have like a tiny little apartment. Weird. Shouldn't be that way. The cost, this, this, it's fantastic that you say that because the reasonings for why I have issue with people saying um that you should be fine doing the things you need to do i was when i was your age i did it well let's look at the cost of living and let's look at the average salary they're dangerously close right now right now and i don't know how soon i'm not going to say really soon i was about to say really soon but eventually the cost of living will be higher than the average wage and we will be thrown into this bit this great depression again so with that in mind and with the knowledge that minimum wage doesn't cover anything the governments the government and corporations are holding money and putting them in offshore bank accounts and funneling them into funds and shit just to circulate the money more and more and to take more money out of that money um the working man is being kept at the stake for what reason would you say why are we being put into this state of perpetual labor where we cannot um proceed with our lives where we cannot build from it where we cannot uh 
we can't truly get the fruits of our labors from the work that we put in. Honestly, I don't know. Like, I there's so much going on. I feel like economically. Honestly, I don't know. That's all I have to say I, about it. I would say that it's just going to become another. It's getting very close to another form of slavery. I would say. Where yeah. if you want a house, if you want a car, if you want a family, you have to subscribe to the ideologies that are present in the environment that you have, that you want to stay in. And if you do not, then you are forced to live another way of life. But most of the ways of life that you could live by yourself are illegal. So what's happening is is that this government of ours um, is, a, is forcing us to accept what we're doing and become just numbers. So when do you think would have been the last time like that it would have been a fair market for like everybody involved is has, has would, that even occurred in america i i don't i would say it occurred in america before europeans came to america i would say probably the the age of criminal cavemen i would cavemen after a little bit after cavemen there were no taxes. There were no regulations. There were no anything. You saw what you saw, and you traded. You traded for. You traded for. So you it would, was fair. You, you were make, at the. You would quite literally make the fruits of your labor, and then if you had spare fruits, you could trade them for someone else's fruits, and then some people would make a living by doing something more unique, like stone gathering, and then trade for other people's fruits. Yeah, so let's say you have two people, you have one person who gathers stones and one person who gathers berries. Well, the guy who's gathering stones uh, has enough stones for himself, but he has enough to trade with others. Well, he doesn't have any berries. He's not a berry gatherer. Well, the berry gatherer has more than enough berries to keep around food for herself, but she needs other um, materials. So she trades those materials for herself. It's just the state of tribalism is effectively the most longest proven form of government even though it's not truly a government, but the way of life, and it was perfect, and civilization ruined it. And I think it should be acknowledged that at any point, he can pick his own berry. If yes, that's exactly. If there's no one to trade with, or if the people aren't I know that you said enough, that very seriously, but it comes off as a joke. Like, he can, he can feed himself if he must. He doesn't have to rely on other people. He can pick his own berries, guys. He's not stupid. <laughs> Nothing is stopping him from living. He yes. doesn't have to, like, get permission to survive. He doesn't need a license. He doesn't need uh, money. He can just literally go outside of his hut or cave, look at a bush, and say, is there a berry right there? There's not. Look at that bush. Is there a berry right there? Yes. And he's just as sufficient as the berry picker, and then... even though there might be a lack of knowledge. Yeah, it's true. He might not be as good at it, but of course, that's sort of kind of the disadvantage. But um, eventually, there were so many different resources, and there was so much difference in distance between the berry picker and the stone picker, and maybe wood gatherer and all that stuff that they like came up with the universal currency, right? And I think that's where it started getting iffy. Currency, because. Who regulates that currency effectively has a lot well, of power over. I think what's very interesting good. about what's very interesting about currency nowadays is that our currency is based on the stock market. The U.S. dollar is essentially based off of how well the stock market does. Um, and the stock market itself is so. Feasible, like infeasible, like it's it's infeasible to me that we let a computer control whether or not we live, whether or not we can afford food the next day, whether or not we do this, because it could literally be as simple as the electricity going off worldwide. 
and our dollar would have no meaning to this. Wait. And if you... What? What? The stock market isn't controlled by a computer. Yeah. It is. Nobody I mean, does the numbers on the stock market. Nobody... I know nobody them in. does the numbers, but it's not, like, run. It's calculated. So... When the stock market came out, there were a series of programs put out by these developers, these software developers and hardware developers. And they put out this AI, and this AI generated figures. And with figures that generated, it could value, it could, it's a very simple concept. It could value the amount of something that something's worth based on how well it's doing in a market. That's an AI. That's an artificial intelligence. It may not be an artificial intelligence as a uh, like uh shown in culture or like popular culture but it is an artificial intelligence and i try explaining this to people and they're like oh that's not an ai an ai is like a uh, how from a uh, space odyssey and they're like yeah that's an ai that's an artificial intelligence that's what we you would consider to be an AI. but on a relative perspective this computer is regulating things on its own desires and programs on and it projects and it thinks for itself and it's entirely self-run now and if you disconnect it from these networks and the electricity it will crash the stock market i i would i would disagree with you on that but i don't know that much i just i'm pretty sure that the stock market is computerized i don't I'm pretty sure that it's the people putting in the numbers and stuff, and then it calculates percentages and specific formulas. I don't think that. Well, it was AI. at one point. It was at one point. It was like that at one point. I mean, because there obviously, because are... there used to be uh paper stocks, right? But it's not like that anymore. You don't have paper stocks anymore. Everything's online, and when everything's online, you no longer have someone who inputs this data in. It's just a generated thing. It's generated. It's not controlled by a person. If it was controlled by a person, there would be a lot more corporate fraud, but there's not. I do believe that AI makes predictions about the stock market, which can effectively change the stock market. Like if it says that this stock is going to collapse, people preemptively take it out, which means that it's going to collapse. And it creates like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I I don't I don't think that the stock market is just like a I don't think it's that similar to the ones in No Man's Sky. Where it just sort of puts random values on different objects. Do you have any stock? No. You should get stock. I'm not doing that why because i don't want to i just don't feel like it. it's not something i would want to do i'm gonna get some stock as soon as i have like money to throw away my mom got stock in the company she works for and she's already made like a hundred dollars off of it so i think that sounds pretty epic just getting money for doing nothing because you um invested wisely on something you believe is going to do well i don't like the fact that you said epic as an adjective like you're like i know it can be used as an adjective but i don't like that you use that ironically what did i you say said, I think that's pretty you said that's pretty epic like you sounded like a child well, it's pretty epic i don't want to i don't want to lie so don i have a question for you what recently you have been posting pictures of the red dragon painting on your story and in group chats that you and I are in. And um, I can't help but notice that the red dragon is predominantly featured in the movie The Red Dragon, which is about Francis Dollarhide, a serial killer who becomes what he believes to be <laughs> God. He's acting. He's acting like he knows all of this, like right off the top of his head. But I know for a fact you're reading this off of a Wikipedia article. Like, no, there's like, no way you're just you're just pulling this you're pulling this out of your ass, right? This is not a pull out of your ass question. I looked up Red Dragon, but you have been posting pictures. <sighs> I just looked yes. up what his name was. But what yes, about it? 
what is what is what is your what is your statement here by posting these pictures? Is it related to the movie character? I think it's uh I think the red dragon is such a powerful thing for so many different reasons. It symbolizes the coming of revelations within the Bible, which is what it is supposed to symbolize. Uh, the coming of the red dragon, which is the emergence of this creature from uh it's not the sea, it's like Hades or whatever. The release of this a uh, demonic presence, um, and that's what it symbolizes. And what I think it symbolizes for the individual is how it pertains to the book, The Red Dragon, which is the book that introduced Hannibal Lecter to um, society, popular culture, yeah, cultural media. Um, so basically, The Red Dragon, for the serial killer in this book, is a persona. For him it's his it's his uh breaking it down to a psychological perspective it's his split personality it's someone that's slowly it's a personality that's slowly dominating him over time slowly but consistent consistently he's powerless to stop it that's basically the personality he picks on that's killing people do you it's believe yourself dominant. to be the red dragon i don't believe that however i do believe it precedes its uh the statement that was made by the author in that book for how it can pertain to an individual such as a serial killer i think it pertain to anyone who's capable of great action the beast that someone can become is only as much as they allow themselves to be. the mental prison that you allow yourself to be in um can be broken by someone other than you and if you allow them to such as the great red dragon and it doesn't have to be evil it doesn't have to be malicious or murder or whatever but it most definitely can be a thought process that some can follow and it's something that i subscribe to i think it's a thought process that i'm attracted to is men can become beasts and a great awakening what beast will you become one of action a beast of action yeah yeah like a like a hollywood action movie i'm just i'm gonna be called the, you're gonna call me the beast of action i'm gonna be in x-men 5 in 2042 when i look up the beast of action um there's a lot of images of beauty and the beast live action so that's uh are you gonna become are you bell is bell from what beauty and the beast from beauty and the beast well bell's on the beast is she um i don't know you should i think there's a sex scene in this movie somewhere in uh the live action movie. <laughs> in the disney movie yeah there's like a there's like a isn't there a 40 minute like completely nude full frontal sex scene between like of emma the... watson and yeah. an actual dog because they don't want to <laughs> spend the money on like cgi they wanted they just no. threw a dog in there and no said, go at it it's bell it's emma watson and one of the teacups <sighs> see i feel like my comment was funnier but i feel like it's also because i'm a narcissist and i would believe that my comment's funnier but then again well i, I was like trying to know them I was going to say my joke at the same time you said yours. Oh, okay. Well, it, was, it wasn't an attempt at, like, piggybacking off your joke. It was... It, was... It, it it came off like that. It came off like you were trying to outdo me. Did it do... Like, I don't know about personally. Subscribers, let us know what you guys thought. <laughs> which joke, joke is battle. better? You know, if, <laughs> if you heard them both at the same time, which one would you think was the better joke? Alright, um, let's... I don't... Would you like to go back to the list, or do you have any further comments on the beast within, or... I have further comments on it, but it can make some time when I'm more centered in that mentality where I'm like, politically, I care about politics, because right now I'm too tired to care about politics. Not that I don't care about politics right now, I'm just too tired to discuss it at length. The beast within. Um, so if you don't want to talk about politics, the anarcho-monarchism, I think is something we should talk about. 
That's that's politics. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's pers- <laughs> it's more related to the berries and stones thing that we were talking about. Okay. Because so I feel like the beast you... of action is more about personal uprising within the current government, and the anarcho monarchism more about an ideal. So anarcho monarchism is essentially the ideological concept that there can be an anarchist state underneath a monarchy, which is a completely paradoxical uh, concept, but it can also apply, uh, anarcho-monarchism can also apply to the state of mind that one can, when they live in a state that is not monarchy, but in order, and you can't reform it, or it, it would be way too difficult to reform the state into monarchy, and instead of monarchy, you go to anarchy, and then monarchy. You go through a state of revolution that completely destabilizes the state and its foundation, and then you institute, install, replace the system with the state of monarchy. I believe either or could work. I believe that there can be an anarchist state that is ran by one person. I believe that one person can decide, all right, all of you do whatever you want go because obviously monarch would have the power to do that so what would the monarch be doing if he's not Um, controlling the state what is he doing she he what is he or she doing does whatever they want to do it's their anarchist clearly if they chose a stand of anarchy the they're just a title however that title could also pertain power you know what this is something this kind of reminds me of um general washington you know in the very beginnings of the united states there were no like strict laws before the constitution but he was still like in charge yeah see that's a very good uh that wasn't exactly anarcho monarchism uh, uh, anarcho monarchism because they very keenly did not subscribe to monarchy they were very against it <laughs> they were very against tyranny I would say enough to uh, probably kill some people. But effectively, but... there was one man in charge, and that was General Washington. And everyone because... wanted him to become a king. That's right. They wanted yeah. him to become a king, but he didn't subscribe to that. And he could have chosen a variation of monarchism, which would have what we know today as most popularly as dictatorships. Where there's a set election, and then that person rules the rest of your life, yada, yada, yada. I believe that he wasn't wrong. I think it was the infighting that has caused our political, political like, world to crumble. Like, it's the fact that we're against each other when we should recognize our differences, but choose to, you know, work towards something. Like there was okay. this whole structure for creating laws and whatever, but they just instead of using it productively, they just choose to fight everything. Right. So, what is the difference between the early stages of America before 1774, post-war, that um, pre-war? Yeah, Post. You said post. Post implies it's after 1774. 1774 was the Declaration of Independence, wasn't it? Yeah. When was the Constitution written? I don't know. I'm looking it up. I feel like this makes us look very bad. I don't care. Fuck the Constitution. Alright, well anyway, the Constitution was written in 1787. So, between 1780, whatever, and 1787, post-war, pre-law, what's the difference between that and anarchy? At least your ideal anarchy. I don't know enough about the topic to discuss it. I wouldn't know. I don't know. I'm not familiar with how, what the colonial life was. So, anarchy is when there's nobody, like, regulating anything, and people just do whatever they want. And they, it's up to them to sort of regulate themselves, you know, crime, and you're in charge of yourself. If you want property, 
go about get your property if there's a neighbor that's fucking you shoot him in the back of the head go out take his property um what's interesting about that uh philosophy is that it's obviously not sustainable or by any means that's uh, like by at, at all but it most certainly does exist it exists between periods of revolution you um, said anarchy is not sustainable mm-hmm would that be one not... of the jobs of the monarch is to retain sustainability? Right, but then that would remove anarchy by uh, being a monarch and ordering people what to do. And would that? To... What if that was his only job, like a wartime general? Like they just they don't play any part in it except when the anarchy becomes. Regulated. Well, again, that's not something I really subscribe to. I don't really believe that's possible. But it is something that I like to entertain for the sake of entertaining it. Like, oh yeah, it could work technically, but there's so many different variations of why, like variables about why it couldn't. So you could um, compare it to like the concept communism? of anarcho monarchism. No, no, no. The concept of anarcho monarchism applies to the state of anarchy that is present in revolution needed. Like, I would if there is no monarchy, I would rather have anarchy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand that statement? You couldn't have monarchy, you would rather have anarchy. Thank you for repeating that so as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, is that what you mean by anarcho monarchism? That's what I mean by anarcho monarchism. I'm saying that I don't really subscribe to the idea that most is that's most present with the concept of anarcho monarchism. They're just the two top ideals for you. Ideally, anarcho monarchism. And it's unsustainable state where there is an anarchy present under a monarchy. That sounds perfect, but that wouldn't work for a while. It kind of would just be stupid. But anarcho-monarchism for me means that I want to overthrow or uproot the government into a state of anarchy so that there can be a monarchy installed. Rather than through reformation. You get that. Yeah. All right. So that's what it means to me. That's what I associate myself with when I say anarcho monarchism. There's the ideally situation, and then there's the realistic one. Realist one is the second one. That's the one that I subscribe to. The anarchy. The or anarchy. The, the anarchy, monarchy. and then yes, anarchy. If not, then monarchy. Yeah, monarchy, if not, then anarchy. Okay, so how do you, how would you go about setting up either one of those? If you had a blank slate. If I had a blank, what do you mean by a blank slate? Like, say you had a group of people, like a large group of people who are willing to do whatever you, like, no matter how ridiculous the law, they would follow it. Uh, radicalist. Basically. Like like, what would you do? What would I do? So, the blank slate doesn't imply that there's this state of anarchy, like everything's to my whim. It implies that I have it that way, that I you can have, do whatever I want. You have land, and you have people, and other than that, you exist in a vacuum. You can go to war with other nations, otherwise, like, you don't exist. You can trade, it doesn't they don't... So I basically have my own Waco. You have your own world. Oh, my own world. Alright, like, well, then my world is perfect, I need to do nothing. I just need to install monarchy. What would you do? There's no need for anarchy. Well, I wouldn't sell myself as a monarchist under divine rule, which would be creating a church um, dedicated to Christ, obviously, and probably putting would that you, under orthodox teachings. Would you make your own version of Christ? Mm -mm. I would. I would allow Christ to be Christ. I would allow the church to decide that. That would be the counter to what I believe in. The church has to be corrupted. And then I would have to be corrupted. I would say the church wouldn't be corrupted without you making it corrupt in this situation. Exactly. That because that's the power exchange it's between me and it's between the church. And without me, there is no church present because there is no divine rule. Without my blood, there is no divine rule. That sounds awfully uh um prophetic in the sense of like, oh, I'm a prophet, like I am the next coming of Christ. That's not what I mean. I'm saying in that set world if there is no of 
be present, then Christ obviously would be present in the hearts of those that believe in him, but Christ in that government would not be present unless there is another installed monarch that comes through by anarchy. Would you want your monarchy to be based on religion? Yes. I wanted the political ideology set to be based around what I personally believe in. And you said you would when not. When it comes to religion. You would not be the monarch. I would be the monarch. You would be. That's changed. I would. That answer has changed over the years. I do I, remember you saying before that you would put someone that you felt was more competent in charge. And you competent? Would want to be, yeah, you would want to be a part of the nation. I believe I'm com. I believe I am confident. That sounds. I I'm confident in that I am confident because I believe that I have the capacity to be a monarch. I have the capacity to decide certain decisions that most would rather find distasteful. I feel like and I, it would be possible if you had like a large group of trusted advocates and advisors. Oh yeah, that's typically how it ran. Like you would need somebody who would help you with foreign relations and economy and stuff. Well, I would prefer to stay secluded and isolated. I believe that if I own a set of land and I could run it accordingly, then I would want it set to a grid-like pattern where we would have industry. Maybe not so much industry because I don't really care about that, but industry enough for defense of the state and then production of food. Um amenities people want amenities otherwise they're not very happy but regulate to the point where they're not so readily available for those who are brave who want brave amenities such as you know pornography or uh hookers or uh so drugs you, like you want to keep them working to stay busy even if i don't want to keep them necessary. working to stay busy they don't need to work as much because realistically you don't need to work that much a day to sustain yourself on your own farm all right, so let's say that you have a house. Let's say that everyone has a homestead. Hmm. I like, uh, ideally, this concept would work under if you're good at what you do and you can sustain your life and you can bring in your own food and harvest your own crops. You deserve to keep that homestead. If you can't do that, then you don't deserve that homestead and you're going to starve uh, if other people don't give you food and you're relying upon yourself we shouldn't be relying on whether or not a food truck gets delivered to Walmart or whether or not we eat tonight, whether there's a food shortage. Things shouldn't be like that. It's an inefficient system because it's not a self-reliant system. Government, the people shouldn't rely on me to whether or not I feed them either. I shouldn't be um, in charge or the market shouldn't be in charge of whether or not they get food. They should get their own food. The market should be in charge of whether or not they get certain amenities. If the people cannot produce certain amenities, and they probably would want to produce certain amenities, they would probably, as a homesteader, they would probably be pretty content with what they do, as most people do are when they're farmers or um, foragers or self-sustaining, self-sustaining, self-sustaining people are happy people. Stress-free, I feel like, no debt. Well. There's certain levels of stress that come with it. I would say the overall existential dread of, like, the stress isn't there. Not as present, but it can still be present in higher intelligent quotients, as it typically is. Like... With people who entertain such thoughts. The average, like, office worker, you know, has their entire day... if If the average office worker wasn't sitting at a computer all day, doing nothing, or nothing... And instead, were put under my rule, and were given their own, and staked out their own land, uh, made their own food, harvested their own crops, fed their own wives. Um, I feel like they'd be pretty happy. I feel like they'd be a pretty happy boy. Remove porn from the equation. First of all, porn, is something I have such a, I have such an issue with. We've never talked about that. I think we should give that a go. All right, Noah here believes in porn. I do not, however, <laughs> I do watch porn. I initially. believe. That because I am very weak willed and I like Latino women. Okay, and I don't so with Latino women. I would like to present my argument 
first. Now, the thing is, we're not directly opposed, I feel like. the And also, I would like to state that porn, this conversation should be split into two sections, the industry and the consumption of porn. Those are very different, right? And I think we should talk about them separately. The industry's pretty I, garbage. I, I feel like they're not. I feel like I believe that both are essentially the same. They're both made for the same purpose. They both feed off of each other, but all right, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, like, um, the girls and the guys who are involved and the fact that they preach on young girls and convince them to drop out of college or quit their job or whatever. Preach? Then... You preach? Did you mean to say preach? Pray. Pray? Pray on they, girls. They pray, they, they preach to young women <laughs> in church that they should join the porn, porn, porn industry. Oh, Lord. Run down. Oh. Eat the cracker of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> so, um... They, like, prey on young girls, convince them to, you know, put their life on hold for this very temporary money. And it's not even as much money as I assumed. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, like, just above livable, which is fine, but it's not a sustainable work environment. So that's mm -hmm. not, it's not great. They're sort of manipulating people into participating. And, you know, a lot of Young people sort of have that. Well, idea. you know how porn started out, right? Like magazines, you mean? In yeah, the inventor of porn, porn pornographic film, pornographic magazines. Charles Darwin. No. It was a child porn, actually. <gasps> That's how it started. Well, people took it pictures started... of their as soon as there were cameras, people were taking nude pictures. Yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. You saying like I'm the saying sold the, the porn product? industry itself, the porn industry. I'm not saying people just taking pictures of themselves naked. What constitutes saying... what constitutes it as porn? Does it have to be sold as like a commodity? Yes. Okay. It has to be porn is the selling of sexual film or explicit Image. content. So, yeah, it's not healthy to the people who participate in creating it. But that is where I sort of end when I disagree with it, because I do not believe that the consumption is bad. And John does. So, I would like... Medically to... speaking, spiritually speaking, uh, physically speaking, and... um, so I would like to ask Don to explain why he thinks it is bad. That's what I'm about all to right, do. All right, you may go ahead. All right, thank you. So it's bad for all those reasons. All right. Could you restate those reasons for those of us who were not listening? Mentally, physically, medically, psychologically, spiritually. Okay, a lot of they those are you the same. Spiritually, from well, no, mentally is the concept of like how you retain yourself, your ego. Psychologically is your subconsciousness. Uh, no. Physically is the things that it does to your body, what it does to your uh, outside of your brain, to your muscles, your limbs, your groin, your hair, eyes, nose, all that. And <laughs> spiritually obviously your means your con connection between you and uh, Christ or whatever you would consider to be your God, whatever you believe in. Or uh, general spiritualism doesn't have to be religion. Yes. You're you're in, in touchness with so spiritually obviously it separates you from a lot of set religious beliefs organized religion and spiritually like it's an exertion of energy upon another person that is not someone you are romantically involved with or have uh any that knows you there's nothing there so you're separating yourself from yourself to insert yourself into this mindset that you're either the person or you're watching the person or simply that's all you're doing is just watching and you're basically cuckolding yourself and that's the psychological aspect um the subconscious aspect of it is that you're cuckolding yourself some people don't do that some people insert themselves into porn they imagine themselves they watch pov shit like that um but that even then you're not doing that and your subconscious knows that so it 
it tries to make you okay or it tries to guilt you into it. More typically, it tries to guilt you into not liking it anymore by making you depressed, um, angry, more irritable. Um, and on an addictive aspect, what it does to your brain, uh, it's the same thing as doing meth. All right, not the same thing chemically wise, where like if you do this, like it's the same same feeling as meth does, but rather the chemicals that are present in meth that make you addicted to this, which is dopamine and the endorphin levels that increase, um, spike all of a sudden really hard, just like it would if you were having sex or while you were coming, kind of kind of not maybe the same levels, but same effect. And if you do that more regularly, then the average endorphin levels in you that make you content, that make you happy, drop incredibly hard. That lowers your testosterone if you're a man, that lowers your estrogen if you're a woman. It makes you, um, it can make you impotent. It can make you uh, chubby tittied, what I would say. It gives you a dad bod. All right. It makes you very much of a loser. And, um, that's just that's just mentally and physically, then psychologically and then spiritually, and then what was the other one that I stated? Uh, mentally. Mentally, all right. Mentally, what you think of yourself and your own ego, it downplays your ego and it reduces you to looking at a phone for sexual consumption. When mentally you should be engaging in this act with someone else. Outside of religion, outside of spirituality, you should be having sex with someone. All right, that's your biological instinct. And when you give your biological instinct the notion that it's being uh, satisfied at such a high rate or such a low rate or even rate at all, when it's not truly being satisfied, your body knows that. And then psychologically, your body will boom, fuck you over, boom, fuck you over, boom, fuck you over, boom, fuck you over. So it's not... It's not a bad thing when you are like ta- getting nudes from a girl yourself. Completely, completely different. Because completely it's different. Not in that's why yourself. that's that's why OnlyFans is so popular. It's a different form of porn. It's a more um, personable. It's more personable. It can be stylized. It can have more of a relationship. So you like somewhat into thinking that it's about you. It's not a it's not a real relationship. You and I both know that, but it is <laughs> make it sound like real. we do it regularly. <laughs> like no, but we know people it. that we know people that have been involved with it, and we know what it we we can tell what? what it does to them. Who do we know that is involved in OnlyFans? Well, I talk. I know a lot of women, so I'm gonna leave it at that. In case one of these women is watching. You you're currently talking to a girl who does OnlyFans. No, I'm saying I have. And I'm leaving it at that. Hmm. I always wondered what would happen if um males started like flooding OnlyFans with male content, like dick pics. How? Because it's it's a very female heavy industry. Kind of dumb. Okay. How come? Why is that kind of dumb? How come? Like, women enjoy being naked and somewhat naked, muscular, attractive. Well, you know the psychological experiment that was performed on a number of women based on uh, race, creed, and sexuality, or whatever, and they were all turned on by pretty much everything they saw, biologically speaking. Like, whatever they were watching, whether it was, like, scat porn or porn, uh, female on female what? or male on male. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also the same thing with uh, um, uh, women who get raped. Most women that get raped experience sexual orgasm. And even though it's involuntary. Women are just as attracted to scat porn as they are to normal sex. I'm saying that the biological function of women is greed, and when there is, when they're witnessing something that involves a sense of greedy, even as depraved as it might seem, they still 
involuntarily get turned on by it. They're not into it. They say like, oh, that's gross. I don't like that. But the bioreceptors in the brain that make them think a certain way, that make their body react a certain way, and their body movement, the way they move their hands, the way their pussies react, tighten up or clench or get wet or whatever the fuck happens, it shows that they're turned on by what they're watching. There's just a fucking scientist with his finger in the girl's vagina. She's like, yep, she's, oh, she's oh, clenching. She, she's tight. She's getting tight. <laughs> what is she watching again? It's just some guy scalping another person, like a Native American scalping. A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They even did that with, I think they did that with a uh, gore. It's not. They showed him that, and they were still into it. Can you imagine like, being one of those girls sitting in a room full of scientists watching people get, like, decapitated? And then, like, well, the it probably wasn't sex. a room full of scientists. It was probably just someone with like a chart uh, or a graph of their biological reception. One sometimes. hand up her cooch. I imagine somebody probably got off on it. <laughs> one of the doctors, you mean, or one of the girls? Probably one of the doctors. I doubt one of the girls would do that. But I'm sure there are freaks. There's freaks yeah. out there, both genders. Yeah. Um, I think, do you want to make this an hour long, or do you want to? S- no, we'll keep going. I would, I would say that I think fear and general like distress and sex go hand in hand. You know, like I participate in rather. All right. Uh, do you want to do? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you hundred percent sure? Because even I would not talk about what you were about to say. I would not say the things that you said. What do you mean? What What do you think would be the repercussions of my disclosing? Um, someone you know seeing this and saying, what the fuck? I, I don't know. I feel like there are some things that you've <laughs> said to me about the things that you've done that just completely off key normal person. Alright, I won't I won't say anything, but I do feel like that leaves a very big bag of mystery, an air of mystery about mm, Whatever it was. Noah, like. Noah, Noah rapes children. No rapes children. <laughs> no rapes children. <laughs> it's actually bestiality. That's why we were Section. talking about Beauty and the Beast. Ooh. Oh, man. How did we bring it back so, from that? Well, you could bring up another topic on a list that I made, and I'll, I could follow through on it. Easily. Okay. Insult the lit. So. Hmm. Poetry. What? Poetry. You just have poetry oh, number eight. I I, I I write I write poetry. I would, I would just write some poetry. You ever done a haiku? I have not, but you know, since playing Ghost of Tsushima, I've been yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, so, I'm getting into it. I'm like looking at it. I'm like I'm like really reading into it because it like gives you choices for it. And I'm like, what do I mean when I? What am I reflecting on when I think when, about? When you're in like, the game creating a haiku. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's such like just staring I, at and the way he reads it afterwards. Oh my god. Trees. So beautiful. Rustling. Do you play it in English? Y- yeah, but I'm going to replay it in like the old Japanese cinematography thing. I play it just with try it. Japanese talking with English subtitles and I feel like is it I, better? You feel like it's better? I feel like I'm getting a lot of emotion. I don't know what it's like in English. But I feel like I'm getting the more true emotion. Oh, hundred percent, dude, hundred percent. Because it's true syllables, and it's constrained to those true syllables. So that's just translation of it. And their, you know, their faces match the words, which is always nice. It's hmm. such a good game. Well, in English, it their faces also match the words. Oh, actually, I, I actually don't know if they match in Japanese. I just assumed that it was originally in Japanese and you translated it to English. Well, they probably did two separate things because they could have recorded its AAA title, I would imagine. Like, why wouldn't you? Like, if you're like, all right, now, we already have the body cam. We already have, like, the body motion, uh, like, motions or whatever now. We just need the face. And the face is easy to do. Like, you just have to record the person's face saying it. And then just have while they're say voice acting. Twice as many voice lines. Right. So... Poetry wise for me, um, I have a lot. I I've done a lot. I could do anything I want, basically. I'm God. 
I can um, write poetry if I want to. Well, who's who the fuck's gonna stop me? Honestly, the Red Dragon. Um, one of my favorite pieces that I've written is a piece about a sailor who discovers a cheating wife and kills her and the faithful wife. So it starts out like this: I am the death upon your horizon. You gotta read it slow, Don. I'm gonna put music over this. You gotta read it very All right. meaningful, slow. I'm gonna All mute right. myself. Alright. I am the death upon your horizon. The rotting stench. Undeserving of your fleeting gaze. I hunger and yearn for your lips. Above, below, the sweetest taste. Biting and clawing face burned into my eye, my last, my third, your own, forever wide. Your taste stains my carpet, my walls, my skin. I hate you so. What a mess. Or glorifying your very sins. You'll taste Gaia. Your taste bleached. I shut tight. Brain and head swept up in a receding tide. Rise so regretful. That last second you had. Green orb stained with your taste, crimson black, shackled and chained, not with iron, by your own fleeting gaze. The sea calls for me, fibers tighten, the crowd screams obscenely. The beastie reigns supreme, thickly steeped of steak, parsley, and greens. Your democracy calls for my neck. My lips call for you, broke neck and a shattered tooth. It buried me where the oceanic breeze turned foul. My body lays next to you. How beautiful was the horizon, where we came to be. Two lovers, bound by seaweed and linen sheets. Before your lips tasted of another. Before my anger knew no bounds. Before I heard you spew her bounds. The saliva of cigarettes lips of a whore. I hate you so. What a mess. I am the death upon your horizon. If you look up Crimson Black on Google, you will find only images of cars and shoes. Alright, and that's, that's exactly that's exactly the reaction I expected. <laughs> <laughs> not a real color, Don. Crimson black is not real. Crimson is a color. Crimson black is like mad picture it as a blood color that is dark, rich blood. A crimson, yeah. a black crimson. Mm -hmm. I would say the a blood black that would be the blood black. before you know blood before it becomes a uh, brown on it on us as a stain on something. Well, when it's like mostly it's a, black with a red glint. It's it's incredible. It's mostly black. Yes. Crimson black. Easy. There you go. Black, crimson. Would have said it the other way. Have you seen The Lighthouse? It's a movie. No. Probably. All right. Could we get... Could we put an audio file of a, a monologue by one of the actors in that film? Sure. Email it's like it's editor. only it's only it's only like four two minutes long, but it's really good. Forty two minutes. No, not forty two. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Did you just laugh at one of my jokes, Don? It was actually pretty funny. You're not supposed to do that. All right, Noah. We had an I'll agreement that Don would not find me funny at all, no matter what I did. It didn't work. Robert Patterson is in a lot of movies, but I did not know existed. Ooh. So this is coming to the one hour mark. We should probably go right. for another ten minutes though, in case like we have to edit. We'll 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 talk about what we plan on doing with the channel. Um, I don't really know. Yeah. To be honest, since since I am getting like a real job, I will probably have more free time than I did at school. Um, it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be a weird couple of months. It has been a weird couple of months. Things have changed. 
Yeah. A lot of things have changed. Yeah. There's been a few few changes. I do. All right, regret. cool. Oh, that's, a, that's a nice little <laughs> statement from Noah. That for this conversation. But there's been, yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's been a few changes. You sound like an uncomfortable uh like stewardess who's like being flirted with by a guy at a diner. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Stewart how you're carrying. Like, that's how you're. That's how you're presenting yourself in conversation. Like I feel like I'm a waitress hostage, but with like polite with politeness. Social hostage. There's actually a good term for that. I don't remember what it is. Like a hostage to like the societal norms or whatever. Victim of. I would say victim. It's typically what most people are. They're victims of societal norms. Like I don't want to hold the door open for someone that's like. 10 feet away but coming in fast but i feel obligated to i don't feel like i should meet my girlfriend's dad for a very long yeah. time why why does society say i have to have you ever met one of your girlfriend's dads yeah i met all of ali's family no nice. context that whatsoever nobody knows <laughs> what you're talking about i guess the channel doesn't know i had a i had a girlfriend for seven months between the last, like, eight ball videos. Yeah, I met her family. And how was that? Uh, intimidating. I like. I don't. I don't. Family. I can never decide how important family is to me because I love the family and I wouldn't be who I am without them. But I also feel like, as an adult, I don't necessarily want them in my life that much. Like, I would like to be my own person standing alone against the wave. I agree with that on a number of levels, but I feel like I should be reliant. Like, I don't, I won't take money from my parents when it comes to college. Like, I won't, I won't let them pay for that. That's my burden to bear if I do decide to go to college because I don't want them to pull that over my head as in, oh, uh, well, you failed college. That was on you. Like, we paid for it. Like, we want you to finish it. And I pulled it over my head. Hold me hostage in that sense. I'm not <laughs> saying they would. Hostage. I'm not saying they would. I'm not accusing them of such a thing, even though I it also they would. <laughs> so I guess I'm saying they would now, but... It might um, also be more subtle, like, just, like, hinting that you never finished Passive. College. Passive, aggressive. Like, I don't want that. I want there to be a sense of accomplishment if i do go about doing that if i do do that for myself if i do do that like i don't even want to do that i don't think it's important to me but i'm saying if it it's important to me enough that if i'm going to do it i'm going to do it on my own terms i genuinely feel like you should go to college with the intent to learn like it's not about for me it's not about the degree i would rather learn everything i can about psychology and flunk than have a master's in counseling well and not know what that's kind of what defines your grade isn't it depends on how much you want to learn about the subject because if you don't want to learn anything about the subject you're not going to perform really well, well no because a lot of your grade is depends on how much you can memorize not how much you understand a concept oh. you know what do you know what i mean by that yeah i know what you're saying i'm saying that shouldn't i think memorization is such a the things that you need to memorize when it comes to the things that aren't relative to your degree that's whatsoever um, are so unimportant, but you still need to retain them. And I think it's one of the biggest problems with academia that are present in modern, uh, in our modern world here in the Western world here in America. Um, the knowledge that you need to have to be able to get a degree for something that says you have knowledge for this degree does should, doesn't pertain to the degree at all. And I think that's bullshit. I think the only reason why that exists is to keep certain people. Like, I think it's just a money thing. I'm not gonna going to the extent of which I've written my manifesto um, when it comes to academia. Yeah, I do but, I do agree. Like, I'm taking English classes and I don't, I don't feel like I need that for counseling. I have a very clear I understand that some people don't know what they're doing. Like, they don't know what they want to do and they just need to take these things to see what it's like. But I do not want anything to do with English. I'm never going to read a goddamn book in my entire life. I don't have to. And if I do, I'm going to read it at my own pace, understand it how I want to understand it. I feel like I've never learned anything from an English class that I didn't know. 
I have noticed, Don, that I feel like I'm less capable of creating coherent phrases and sentences. Like I have to think a lot harder to create um, words. Since since you started taking English classes, <laughs> right? No, but I feel like I know there's too much. No, that was an actual problem. This is that's a problem that I would say is there's too much going on in my head. Like there's so many rules and words that like I can't think of the simple words because I there's so many random things going on. Much as part of ADHD is that. Like when I said preaching to young girls, <laughs> like I'll say that in a text message and not notice it because I'm already thinking like eight words ahead of what I'm texting. And it is fucking annoying. Texting girls, trying to impress them, and your fucking sentences are weird. They don't make sense. It's not fun. And it's getting worse when I understand more concepts. And um, it reminds me, before the recording, Don showed me a clip from Joe Rogan about this dude who took um, a bunch. He, like, takes a bunch of mushrooms and stuff. And he sounded really, like, stupid when he talked. But he wasn't. Like, he could tell you all of the Latin terms for all these mushrooms. But he would stumble every time he talked. And he said, um, and he went, uh, like, the Latin Genemus Convention. He obviously has done mushrooms and a few psychedelics. Your, your mind to such a degree where it perceives what we consider to be cognitive vibe. And things start to become contemporary when it comes to colors, sounds, visuals. Uh... Well, thoughts, emotions, like there are things you simply cannot describe, whether it be better or worse. So when something doesn't have a name, it's a lot harder to describe it. And if I'm on acid or if I'm on mushrooms, and I've never done acid or mushrooms, so I'm not going to say this is an actual fact, but I'm believing I'm, like from, I've been high before, I've heard shit, I've, vis- I've had hallucinations as well. You, know, um, you can ask me. You can, you can yeah. ask me. Yeah, but, but I'm gonna, yeah, but basically, if you witness something and it's indescribable, it's very difficult to describe it to someone who hasn't experienced what you've experienced. It's hard to describe it to people who have. Like, I did, I did acid with my roommate, and we couldn't quite talk about what we experienced. We just sort of looked at each other and. Like, we just agreed that we knew, we understood. Even if we, I, like, I don't really know what he experienced. I just have to assume that it was the same as me. And it's hard to explain, you know, the feeling and, like, what's going through your head. And I feel like a part of that has stuck with me since. Like, I see, I see things in, like, emotions and actions. And I don't always know how to describe every emotion and action that I've ever done or experienced is it's not pleasant but it also makes me feel like uh, weird special-ish like retarded yeah like handicapped mentally handicapped it really does sometimes I feel like I am getting less socially capable I wonder if it's also from the quarantining I haven't talked to a person in real life in a while. Yeah, you know what? You overstep your social boundaries when we text a lot. To be totally honest, like I'll leave you on Reddit. It's like one AM, and you text me like, "So Don," and then you'll like go on a fucking tangent for like fifteen messages about some some shit. And like that's fine during the day. Like I don't mind that. <laughs> but he's texting me at one AM about like, like <laughs> or whatever. Like about like literally like. And I don't know what to talk, like, I don't know how to respond to it, because I'm, like, trying to go to sleep, because I'm half awake. I'm reading this, and I'm like, God, shut up. I can't leave him on red either, he gets very offended if I do that. <laughs> well, usually when I, like, text you a lot, and it's what's, about what's that's worse, important. What is worse about it is if I leave him on red, he doesn't acknowledge the fact that that's what red said, continues what he's <laughs> saying. <laughs> Even if I left him on red, he notices it like 30 minutes later. He'll go off and about what he's talking about before. I remember I sent him my entire review of Ghost of Tsushima at like 2 in the morning. It was a very Which was actually movie. pretty interesting to real. I, I did read that. It was... I agreed with it. On a lot of shit. But right now, we're hitting about the 10-minute part of the podcast. 
um, we have to add some a clip of something, probably some images to um, clear things up. No, is in charge of that. Noah, I'm what sure you won't mind. You're adding a clip of a monologue from a movie called The Lighthouse. I was just going to add that after you asked for it. Yeah, yeah, just add that in there where I put it. Like, obviously, there needs to be editing. We need to, we need to keep it under a certain timer. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm going to get into. Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Hark! Hark! Triton! Hark! Bellow! Bid our father, the Sea King, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury. Black waves teeming with salt foam to smother this young mouth with punch and slime. To choke ye, engorging your organs till ye turn blue and bloated with builds and brine and can scream no more. Only when he, crowned in cockle shells, with slithering tentacle tail and steaming beard take up his fell befinned arm. His coral tine trident screeches banshee like in the tempest and plunges right through your gullet, bursting ye, a bulging bladder no more. But a blasted bloody film now a nothing for the harpies and the souls of dead sailors to pick and claw and feed upon only to be lapped up and swallowed by the infinite waters of the dread emperor himself. Forgotten to any man, to any time, forgotten to any god or devil, Forgotten even to the sea. For any stuff or part of Winslow, even any scantling of your soul, is Winslow no more, but is now itself the sea. All right, have it your way. I like to cook it. Are we gonna keep doing the song of the podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will. Um, who did it last time? Uh, I don't know. You go. I'll just I'll do it this time. You can have next one. All right. All right. Yeah, I'll take it next time. So, um. Anyways, guys, thank you for ignoring the fact that there wasn't really that much of an intro. Um, as we typically do, we're just gonna start doing it more organically and jump through the process instead of forcing it. We did. We haven't talked about this before, so we'll see. We'll see if that holds true. Yeah, and uh, but thank you guys for listening. For those of you that do listen to the end of this, and I hope you enjoy this week's song of the week, which is and cut. I didn't even have time to think. I didn't.
Jesus.